हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल दिस इज गोइंग टू बी वन अमेजिंग वीडियो जस्ट वॉच इट थरली एंड यू विल एंजॉय इट and you will learn lot of small minor details so it, this is a 75 year old lady hard of hearing very hard cataract as you can see and uh, in these case i prefer to give a posterior subtenon block so the, during the surgery i don't have to communicate much with the patient who is already having defective hearing so this is a almost like a black cataract pupil is uh, not well dilated so here i am staining the anterior capsule under air Uh, i kept the dye for at least 30 seconds in this case because i know that the i need a good contrast when i do capsulorexis now here i am already thinking that should i use uh, a pupil expansion device but i went ahead with the capsulorexis here i know that i have to make a large capsulorexis being a very dense cataract i want uh, more space for the maneuvers and i don't want the zonules to be affected so you can see that i am targeting almost 5.5 mm axis and as i complete the axis you can see that the pupil has come down further now here is the trick you need to do very very you know controlled hydro dissection give minor like small fluid burst there just little bit so that you don't get a posterior capsular rupture hydro rupture but you still should get a rotating good rotating nucleus and i have not seen that little anterior movement of the nucleus yet and that's why i am continuing to do little bit of more hydro dissection you can see that i am going multiple times in all quadrants giving little pushes of fluid it is not like the usual push of fluid which where i tend to push lot of fluid in softer grade of cataract and i get a one wave in uh, at uh, in first go itself so i just check whether i can uh, rotate the nucleus i couldn't so again i am giving little bit amount of fluid this is very critical stage for these dense cataract i need to separate it from the capsule now i am thinking of which pupil expander i should use b hex has been already there dr suen bhattacharya has devised it it's amazing but now we have bx 2.0 also it is larger you can see its diameter is 6.75 it's thicker around 125 micron and now we have got another one by dr suen which is amazing b octa 8 mm so it's a length you can see is a 8 mm thickness is 125 micron and if you check the diameter it can be almost like 10 so i thought that i should use it so i'm using this for the first time in this case i just got a few samples from him so i decided that this is the right case to do it i have already done capsulorexis but many pe people feel that uh, you know uh, putting this uh, ring after doing capsulorexis is difficult it's absolutely easy you just have to be careful when you put those flanges it you can see it has eight flanges four go below the iris and as i am pushing i generally push this uh, little away and i lift it up little bit so that i know that the capsulorexis margin doesn't get engaged and i can actually watch the capsulorexis margin there so i know that it's free of capsulorexis there so the three flanges i can just put it under the iris right from the main incision itself and you can see that the capsulorexis can be seen now very clearly and for the last flange which uh, goes under the incision i love this because in b hex i have to you know drag down that uh, third flange under the iris in the subincisional area but here because we have four flanges uh, it's uh, one flange will always come under the incision which uh, makes it very easy later on when we implant the iol large pupillary expansion and this is what i wanted now you can see that i am again repeating the hydro dissection i am looking for that little anterior movement and i think i got it so now the nucleus is moving freely this is i wanted and this large pupil expansion device has given me more visibility so now i could have i did the proper hydro dissection here and now i am ready for the feco emulsification this large pupil expansion is also useful because these dense cataracts tend to have 
uh, the chances of junior weakness is high so this will give me a better chance for visibility of you know the nucleus movement or the bag movement there and here watch carefully i'm going very slow if you see the speed of the tip at which it is going forward it's very slow and that's very important in these cases i'm using 70% longitudinal power here or 80% because it's very hard almost uh, black cataract so normally i use up to 70 but here i needed 80% of this ozil power with balance tip and i am widening the trench little bit so i can dig deeper go keep on digging deeper in this case because believe me it's very difficult to punch a hole in these cases if you still manage to punch a hole in such cases do send me a video because it will be interesting to see how you could do that so i'm i keep going patience is very important here i should not go and try to divide prematurely this is a case which i demonstrated uh, to the uh, to my delegates who attended faculty 5.0 so i am also speaking when i am operating and now i am doing the pre terminal chop at the end of the trench i have pushed using a 70% longitudinal power five pulses and then with the 5 1.5 mm patwardhan chopper i have split it till the midpoint there i am not going to over stretch it because i know that i can rotate it 180 degree and uh, now try to divide it from the other side and because the pico tip you can see is not very deep into the nucleus you don't have to worry about punching through or damaging fusti capsule absolutely and then the long tip of the patwardhan chopper goes deep and uh, it uh, splits the nucleus into two halves there and now going to the chopping maneuver again i am using 70% longitudinal power and once i bury i am going to use the long chopper 1.5 mm and split the each heminucleus i try to divide it into at least 3 each heminucleus is divided into 3 sometimes 4 so this will reduce the amount of energy later i need for quadrant removal which is important the, in these black cataracts i have to be very careful with use of the energy and you can see how i go uh, you know uh, go deeper and deeper with my sinski uh, patience is important don't lose the grip once you have it on the nucleus so the faco tip should be holding that nucleus till the point that uh, you have chopped that piece completely till the posterior plate if possible so again holding the nucleus with the faco tip there and then with chopper i am going deeper you can see i am not in a hurry i am using a uh, time to go deeper into that depth and chop the piece and now last piece is very important because i want this piece to be completely free this is the first piece i am going to grab and pull out in the center and start doing quadrant removal so i am going to make sure it is completely free now to quadrant removal i have raised the iop to 55 here flow rate to 45 and vacuum to 700 and i have started emulsifying i am using only torsional faco here with ip on and torsional faco is 70% and 80% on time with 5 pulses per second so this is my standard uh you know the parameter for these grade of cataracts and i keep everything on linear so that i get uh, i can control the energy delivered and now after doing that i have put hyalocot more hyalocot is a chondroitin and hyaluronate which protects the endothelium this is very important i already used 25 cd here but you can see that the emulsification is going on at the level of uh, iris plane so that is the most important thing apart from the energy being used so you can see that uh, my tip is right in the central safe zone i am using my left side it's a small sinski now just to maneuver the pieces because i don't need to chop it further and you can watch there as i removed that last piece you could see little fluctuation there and uh, that is something you have to keep on watching for and that's what i was explaining to the delegates who were seeing this surgery that if you see this fluctuation you make sure that when you approach the you know the remaining pieces you reduce the flow rate so somewhere here i am going to reduce the flow rate to from 45 to 36 and the vacuum i want to reduce to from 700 to 500 so you can see that on the right side of the screen that i'll be reducing the flow rate and the vacuum very soon as i approach the last piece there i am keeping the faco tip right at the center very steady i am using my left hand to maneuver and again 
for the last pieces i am going to put some hyaluronic and push some methyl cellulose into the bag so that the bag inflates if there is some fluid misdirection fluid has gone in burger space it also dissipates makes the entire chamber deeper the chances of pc rent while emulsifying the last piece is reduced so i have done two things pushed visco i have reduced the flow rate to 36 reduced the vacuum from 700 to 500 now for the last piece i am watching carefully for any fluctuations in the pc if it happens i am going to reduce it further down and down because this is a critical time for pc rent to occur because many times you see that the pc is undulating with such big nucleus which has been now taken out and the uh, pc might be more fluctuating in these cases so i'm carefully watching you can see that pc is very stable that's what i'm observing and i am explaining to the delegates and i'm completing the last piece emulsification under complete control over the things you can see how steady my hand is how steady the eye is there is there are no fluctuation in the entire chamber and it's happening in a very controlled manner this is the key now you can see that the last pieces are not coming because the tip is blocked that's what i noticed so i gave it to my assistant to just clean it again push some visco push some ovd into the bag there so that uh, the pc is well protected pc is pushed back again and uh, then i can remove these uh, small little pieces which are there so i go in with feco pro of course these small pieces i can remove with ie also that is also a good option you can just crunch or crush it under ie and remove it so here are the last small tiny pieces which i am going to emulsify and uh, now going to ie so this is a dense brown cataract so cortex will be minimal but mostly this cortex is hidden near the equator so sometimes you have to be careful and uh, remove that cortex completely because we don't want post operative inflammation because of retained cortex there but look at the b octa ring there it kept the pupil well dilated it's almost like 7 to 8 mm dilated here giving me complete view you can see that the complete capsule axis is seen so this gives me better i would say comfort while i'm tackling these kind of cases where i'm suspecting that the bag might also be weak so this gives me opportunity to keep watch on the bag also when i'm maneuvering i'm watching whether i am pushing or pulling the bag any time this will prevent lot of complications so congratulations to dr suen bhattacharya and this is what uh, i feel really great about this ring because i don't have to worry about the uh, iol haptic dragging the ring which sometimes can happen with smaller ring of a b hex which is smaller in size than this and removal is so easy you just have to release it from all sides and you can take it out from the uh main incision there no need of any uh you know injector to remove or inject this uh, bhx device and you can see the expansion achieved was great and there were no sphincter tears happening due because of this bhx ring it's a polyamide material and it's flexible so usually it will not cause any sphincter tears but it will retain the uh, pupil size uh, quite well all throughout the procedure the chance of iris chafing and iris injury are less and what is the success of any surgery it is not the feco energy used it is not the maneuvers or the technique used whether i am doing primary chop or trench or stop and chop it is how clear the cornea is in the, on next post operative and this is what we are seeing in this patient that means surgery is 100% successful thank you so much